Good morning. It's um, August 29th. We came out to the farm. We came out here to check on this food plot. And it's exactly three weeks, exactly today, three weeks since we planted this. This is what we have. It came up extremely well. Um, I was going to take a quick look here for some brows. I don't want to be all over this camera, though. This will be a little bit longer video. But there's the trail camera. There's the wild game camera. And there is a tree stand right there. Um, I'll go over what we did with the food plot here um, in a second. But this is, we're calling this one the plot set. And this stand here, which I kind of showed in the video when we did the food plot, um, is for west, southwest, south winds. So right out in front of me here is directly south. North is straight behind me. All right, so then, then we have this setup. Like I said, I like to do multiple setups. I know a lot of guys don't. They just go, okay, well, put one stand in a certain spot. I usually put two stands in really good spots for the most part so I can hunt multiple wins. But um, I have this flag, as you can see. But I have a second stand setup, which is a hang-on, um, up here to hunt easterly winds. Um, and here is this stand set up. This one's a hang on. So like I said, this one's a hang on. Sorry, picking a few sticks up here in front of the stand. Um, I raked all this out, but this flooded. Um, like I have the video of um, when I did trail cameras, it flooded. And it came all up here, so there's piles of sticks everywhere, even though I raked all this out right after turkey season. But anyway, um, so that that stand is for east, southeast, and northeast winds. So it gives us at least some options to hunt this little kill plot. Um, but what we did with the food plot, and this is, this is where I want to clarify, this was solid... It was that tall grass, okay, because like I said, it is a creek bottom. It was a tall grass, kind of what's on the edge over there, that tall stuff. This whole plot was that. Well, I came in here in May. As soon as we tagged out a turkey season, we came in here and spread 120 pounds of lime because it takes about three to six months for lime to actually activate the soil properly. So we came in here, 120 pounds of lime, and then we sprayed it heavy with glyphosate. Well, when we came in here at the end of July, it was already, it was still dead. Um, I came in here and spot spray a few spots that were still green, but it was spot spraying. I didn't even use a quarter of the tank of a two gallon tank. So I spot spray and um, um, sprayed that off. We came in here. What we did is raked out all the dead stuff. We raked out all the dead thatch I spread, I'm going to say about six pounds of nine, triple 19 fertilizer. I went light though. I did not go heavy. So I did that. And then I, we tilled it. We tilled it in once. I was going to do it twice, but we tilled it in once. We took the harrow drag, smoothed it out. We spread the destination, the bow stand. Then we went over it again with the harrow drag. Then we took buckets of water from the creek that's literally right over here and we saturated the entire plot, it took five minutes. And then I went over it with plot start from plot, uh, from deer grow, just to help with the pH and a little bit of minerals. But if, if we walk right here, I'll show you, the creek is right here. Oh, I just had my picture taken, heard the camera go off. Um, but the creek is right here. And as you see, there's actually some chubs in there, <laughs> chubs and minnows. Um, but that's what we did, and we saturated it. Like I said, it's not a big plot. It's maybe an eighth of an acre, maybe even a sixteenth of an acre. It's not very big, but it's going to do the chore to keep these deer in here for a bow shot. And there's actually quite a bit of clover in here, um, which I like because that'll reemerge in the spring. Because this is a good spot here for turkeys. Um, now I don't see any signs of browse pressure. 
so but i'll be interested next week when we check cameras to see how many deer are in here there are prints in here a lot of prints um but i don't see anything being mowed off yet but it could be mowing it off quick i don't know i can't tell but that's what we did to get these plots in so it or this plot in so it wasn't anything crazy um but it did it it, it you could see what it did it looks great now next week though we're going to come in here with the antler grow and we're going to spray it it'll help with a little bit more mineral and it'll also help with the um uh palate palatability of it so we're, we're going to take a look at that but we're actually going to climb up here by the ridge top here and um check for potential blind spots i don't know if i want to go with blinds yet up here because we know there's that trespasser and we know there's other people hunting but I also want to give myself some options because the ridge top is only north winds. I like this spot, so I'd like to hunt it on south winds. I'm out of tree stands. That's probably the first time in years I've ever said that. But I'm out. <laughs> and money's kind of tight right now. So, uh, But I do have four blinds that I can utilize. In my, and, and I'll be doing those next week if I have time. So we'll take a quick look over there. But I just wanted to clarify what we were doing. Um, and explain the, the uh, stand setups and what we exactly what we did to get this food plot in so but uh, that's about it but here's the major deer crossing and if you look at them hoof prints all the way across and we have another trail camera up on the tree over there so um, but yeah so this is what we got so far and we'll update you next week when we come out here and possibly do blinds and then like I said we'll be spraying this with antler grow and checking cameras. So everybody have a good day. Thanks for watching.